Great. So good day to everybody. Thank you very much. Paul, that was a very tough uh, presentation to cover. I hate going after the ED 3D and all the exciting stuff. But today I wanted to do an overview on Aviva's contract, uh, contract risk management. Um, with my intro, I do have 15 years experience with uh, procurement and contracting experience, mostly in projects. At the end of my career, I was actually a customer of Aviva's. So it's really interesting how I use some of that experience, uh, some of my hardships, challenges, and I get to relate it over to working with Aviva now. So I get to kind of relate that through. As we looked at most of the projects, a lot of our customers come to us. And what we really find when we look at contract risks is that there is cost and schedule overruns. It is almost a uh, known fact. Every project that it, when it starts out, um, it's going to be over budget, probably over schedule. So what we did is we actually came down to uh, the five top root causes of these overruns. I'm not going to go into a lot of time just due for today, but we do have uh, lots of examples, challenges of where we go into all of these. Uh, some of the main ones today, more than now than ever, the first one, contract teams working in isolation with a global pandemic in place. This is absolute. So luckily, if you have a system in place where everyone is connected, as we uh, show to, we intend to show you, then we don't lose that disconnection. Um, even back before this, when we had everyone in the same office, we were still disconnected because contract management today is still very disconnected. Lots of different tools. Um, basically, contracting today is still done with Excel, uh, email, Word, uh, maybe some SharePoint, maybe a project drive, everything like this. And we have all of this data spread across. So this relates into some of the other ones that we have. Um, your contract risk and obligations. Any obligation on your contract could be a deliverable or something that's due. Any missed obligation, you're then opening up one of the parties for a potential claim. So again, those are the things that we want to have early warning indicators in place so that nothing falls in the cracks. Uh, with financial control, we've seen that a lot of contracting teams do not have a lot more access into finances rather than their, just their ERP, but they are responsible for reporting what's in the pipeline. This is where we can actually come in and actually show things that are potential and actually pending when you get into change orders and um, invoices to be paid. We have a system that is completely auditable. Everything is time stamped, user stamped, uh, very high security around it. So by having this, you have a fully auditable system in place. Uh, this makes it a hundred times easier to dispute a claim uh, or a question when it comes up. When we get into contractors using the portal, they actually come in and they can actually see where decisions have been made, uh, reviews are decided, all the data is right in there. So again, just want to avoid the claim before it even gets there. And then around change control, I'll touch on this a little bit, how we go into this process, but this is really an interesting one because almost every single customer will come and tell us that either they're not sure of their company's process or procedures, they're not positive they're following those, and if they are, they cannot show that the process is actually being followed with everyone on the project. So that's where we like to come in and put a system in place. We take those most common challenges around those early warning indicators, claims coming in, we need a system that's auditable, um, we need to stay on top of obligations on both sides of the fence, we need to be able to verify payments and have our entire change control. We provide all the solutions on the right-hand side. Uh, we use the things around configurations, um, we have pre-designed templates in place, we basically take your processes and build them into the system. Um, it's one of the highly, most highly configurable systems I've ever used. So where we do is we come in and we ask, how do you work in your contracts today? And we basically can build this and configure it on top of an already ready to solution that's already pre-designed, pre-set. And then we want to get you to an improved contract delivery by having everything in one place. Another feature that we have is that on top of my contracting team and maybe my contractors using this system, we actually have levels of security and we have access to everybody within your company, no matter what their role is on the project. So if something comes in from a contractor and it needs to have a technical review, we can give that engineer, um, document control, project control, anybody that needs to be into the system, they can get access and then they'll be able to do the review, mark it, note it, comment, and it's saved inside of one solution. 
So therefore we're avoiding taking that out of the system, emailing it off, trying to record it and put it back in. We're trying to keep everything centralized in one system. This slide represents how contract management should be a part of your project tool suite. If you look on the left hand side, these are the most common tools that I usually come across with a lot of our customers and they're absolute standards. Every company will say we absolutely have to have an ERP, document management, we have our desktop tools, engineering tools or project control uh, cost management. Like I said today, it's still very, very common that contract management is still done disconnectedly using some of these tools because they do use them to communicate, track finances, um, desktop would be where they usually do Excel is usually where a lot of my contracting professionals are still working in. But if you look in that middle gray box, those are all the tasks that are absolutely necessary within contracting management. They have to be able to communicate. They have to be able to track those milestone dates. Um, with controlling change, they're responsible for reporting what's in the pipeline. Before an invoice can be paid, contractors as well as other disciplines are involved with the payment verification, um, making sure that your obligations don't fall in, in, in the cracks like I've mentioned before. And if claims and disputes come up, even if lawyers get involved, they still need to pull data back from the contract. So again, they get involved again, whether this is years later or not. And all of my contract managers are responsible for their own internal reporting. Again, most of these are makeshift reports. And then on the right hand side, this is where I kind of just reiterate of we need to be able to work with all of the, the disciplines. So all of these disciplines, they can have a role, they can work inside of it, they can be a reviewer, they can have some type of visual access into the system. So Aviva's contract risk management solution. This is the solution suite. So what is included with contract risk management? Uh, when you think about the contracting life cycle, we have pre-award on the left-hand side and post-award on the right-hand side. In pre-award, we start at the very beginning of contractor registration. Uh, using a contractor portal, we can actually have a questionnaire published out to them. They can fill it out, attach security documents, uh, anything that's necessary, and send it back in. And it can be scored, recorded, and then you can actually get where this bidder is um, available to send RFXs to or they're available to work with. Uh, during the tendering management stage, this is where we go through the entire process of we have received a technical scope and now we're ready to put it out and we need to get bids in. Again, we're using that portal. We want to be able to send the RFX package out, um, answer any bid clarification questions, keep everything anonymous, everything is secure. Um, very important to mention that we do have customers in nuclear and infrastructure and around these you can imagine that there's uh, government standards uh, with the nuclear industry there are a lot of government standards with that and this is passed on everything within that of everything is secure everything is time stamped audible and uh, everything is passed all those in flying colors when we get to the stage where we're ready to recommend for award that is when you can actually move the contract into the post award statement. Um, once a contract is awarded, what we usually have found is that most people will basically still try and manage this of, again, disconnected systems, but they are assuming that everything they went through in that tendering stage, uh, negotiating T's and C's, negotiating prices and things like that, they just kind of cross their fingers and hope that everything stays on track. In post-award, this is where our solution absolutely shines because we go into a full management of communications. These communications back and forth between a company to contractor or company to client, whichever direction you're going in. These need to be recorded upon. You have usually different people communicating. So again, we need one tool to know who was the last person to answer this. Did anybody pick this up? Did it fall in those cracks there? The tool is going to manage all the contract obligations and deliverables. Uh, we can show financial tracking or the financial health to actually show further financial data rather than just what your ERP will show. And again, with that fully audible system, you can always manage your claims and disputes. And then the last section is your lessons learned. This is really interesting because as you work from project to project, when you go to a new project, usually all you have is your own internal knowledge. There is a big gap about that. Lessons learned is always recorded, but how do you move forward with it? 
especially in contracting, we actually can record history, um, trends, data, and all those things. Moving forward, you can see supplier performance, you can see your KPIs, you can actually start real, really tracking these things. And we do this through the analytics that covers the entire tool. So while we do um, have some part of transactional management, this system is not to replace your ERP. Um, again, we'll always have the ERP to actually record the approved highest commitment of your contract. It'll be the tool that you actually pay your invoices out of. This is more to do all that free work and basically all that legwork of what happens inside of your contract. We for documents inside, this, inside the system. You can attach documents, send them back and forth, portal, but we're not replacing your document control uh, or your electronic document management system. We don't want to touch any type of documents that are not contractually significant. So your engineering documents, um, any project documents, anything that's more uh, project oriented, it's still going to go through the same path of using document control. And while we can show things that have financial exposure, things in those pipelines such as pending and potential changes or invoices, this is not replacing your cost control system. Again, think of it as complementary. We have a tool that is an advanced communication and contractually risk management system entirely in the cloud and using the portal to actually communicate back and forth. Again, this is for the contracting team to work inside, record everything, and then you've got a full system of that information. When we talk about post-award communications, I like to refer a lot of these back to what we normally use today is email. By using two separate portals, uh, where there's one for the company and there's one for every individual contractor or bidder. The contractor, uh, it's a very light tool. It's a URL linkage. So if they have Wi-Fi or internet, they can access it anywhere in the world. It does not restrict them from using any of their current systems, but they're going to use this tool as the record of communicating back and forth. And what we do is we have intelligent communication templates. They're labeled exactly what we're going to talk about. So if you think about an email, I put a subject title with it and then I send it. I cross my fingers. I hope it got there. I hope it's saved. I hope it's recorded. What we do is we actually label these out to be, if I'm sending a letter, I'm calling it a letter. And that communication template has its own personality. These templates can cover custom fields. Um, again, we can always have attachments to any of these. Each individual one can have their own workflow. So if I have an AFP coming in from a contractor, the workflow behind that is, I don't even need to look at it right all away. Please send it to project controls that workflow will kick in as soon as it's received and inside the company portal, it will start that review process, going to the correct parties where again, they can actually comment, they can record the review, um, they can send a actual error to it, in which case we can send that back to the contractor asking them to fix something. And then again, they can resend it with a revised history. When we wanna manage the change control, what we do is we come in again, we ask, depending on the origin of change, how should your change process work? That would be your process chain. So from that very initial change request, we're going to configure the system that from the change request, we're expecting a change proposal, and that will end up in a change order. Now, at any time in the project, I can come to any change order, and I will have a history trail of what happened behind of it, because each of these steps is actually going to be a communication template. That communication template, again, it records decisions, reviews, who looked at it. And again, that is building my case of why it came into a change order. Recording it at this stage shows me early on, I'm gonna have a change that's potentially coming. That's identifying the impact. We can show financial health around um, my changes. So if you think back to that ERP, it's only gonna show my initial commitment um, value and then it will show me what has been approved changes to date, which my ERP can't show me is anything that's pending and anything potential. So in my ERP, my contract value is 416,000 and my not to exceed or my budget value is 690,000. That looks like it's in fine health. What it's not showing is that I could have multiple potential changes out here. This could be an internal flag raised. It could be a request from my contractor. 
It can be something initiated from another party, but I want to record it because it needs to be on my radar. Because if all of these potentials end up getting approved, I've blown through my budget value and this would cause a red flag. So I need to get the risk identified and we need to be able to label these. And again, each one of my change um, communications, they have complex workflows behind them and they can all follow different routes if needed. If we have an application for payment that comes in through the portal, this application for payment is linked to line items and pricing and rates that have already been recorded in the contract. This eliminates me from my past life of where I would have a, a large file of where I'd have to go audit this application for payment and make sure, are they claiming the right rate? Are they actually claiming the right line item and things like that? By putting everything in the system early on uh, linked to your contract, this is actually going to limit that and I can actually see a lot faster is this accurate? In doing so, I can get it out to the review party. Again, which of my um, project members need to see this application for payment to make sure is everything lined up? Was the deliverable actually met? And things like that. If there's any missing documentation, if any of the rates seem off, we can actually put in a clarification request. We can send it back to the contractor, ask them to revise and resend and then they can come back in and we will start the review process again with the history trail. And then when we get to the final approval, I've got a full, again, end of audit trail. What a lot of my customers do, we'll take that approved AFP, the contractor will put that with their invoice, and then when it goes to the ERP, we get a faster payment time, typically on schedule, company is happy uh, that they're meeting it on time, and of course your contractor is happy that they're getting paid on time. I mentioned that the solution has analytic insight. So we have analytic widgets that are already built into the system. Uh, it comes with about a dozen dashboards and these little widgets are built around all the work that you're doing inside the system based on tracks. This is always a joy because none of my contracting professionals have this at their hands yet. Again, contracting is usually one of the you know, people on the outside and they're trying to make most of these reports. Within here, we can give dashboards around that financial health. Again, I can show what's actually in the initial approved changes, and then again, what's pending and potential. I can break these down to show me the origin of change. So this is a big question I usually say is that if all the changes that we have, where's the origin of change? I can see in this pie graph that it is actually a variation request from contractor that is the big part of this project. Then we have some claims and we actually have a, a variation proposal. Um, in a demo, I can actually show you that these widgets are actually interactive. So I could actually click on this pie chart, drill down into it, and actually see the percentage and the actual request that we have gotten. For claims, I can start recording them, keeping a list of what's actually active in claims, if there's any value associated with them. So this is keeping them on my radar. Um, in this pie chart in the right, lower right, this is my overdue communications. Uh, this is extremely helpful when we don't know what is holding up a process. So when we have communications that are being routed for review, sometimes they go overdue. Um, if it's an overdue communication, we need to find out why. So if you can see here, Melanie actually has that golden large section of the pie chart. This isn't a point of finger. This isn't to go, you know, pick on Melanie and say, you, you're just not doing your job. It could be, you have so many communications open because you're not getting the right answers. Is there something internally that's backing up the process? A lot of my customers will tell me that they'll take these widgets like this and they actually improve their own processes where they can improve their time. Um, with this, you can actually see reviews, um, and you can see response times, we can see what's in agreement status, time limits, the average response time. We have little cards and we have trends that work the same way where we can give you counts. We can show you over time, how are you doing in your work? And again, these are the, the widgets that my customers will use to show their actual KPIs. So again, you're measuring your own work being done in the system. So this is, again, you don't have to develop this. You don't have to load any information into the solution. This is actually gonna feed it back to you in live time. Okay, so that was my quick uh, overview to contract risk management. Um, I was wondering if there has any questions for anyone. Excellent, thank you, Melanie.